seriously, I don't get anything done without coffee. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Did Shakespeare. My name is Cassidy Cash. I am coming to you this week from my house. You can see my house behind me. My little dog sleeps right there. And I have a lot of dogs here at my house, just as a side note. But the smallest one sleeps over there with the golden retriever. That's why the bed is so big, even though the dog is so small. I am ready coffee in hand for this busy Saturday morning. Today is the day that I am speaking at the Tudor Summit 2018. Heather Tesco from England Cast has put together a virtual summit for all things Tudor, and I will be speaking today on what it was like to attend a play at Shakespeare's Globe at 2 p.m. Central Time for U.S., residents and 8 p.m. for people in the UK. If you live outside the US or the UK, you will have to do your own time conversions, but that's when my presentation will be live and I will be available live to chat with you after the presentation over on their Facebook page. I'll also be live tweeting during the presentation, so if you're not already following me on Twitter, hop over there to do that. And make sure that you register for the summit. The summit is completely free and you get to learn about all things Tudor, not just Shakespeare. There will be people talking about Catherine of Aragon and other uh, Jane Seymour and other wonderful things of the Tudor time period. So if you're into that time period of history, you definitely don't want to miss this. It's free to go. It's free to attend all the presentations, but you do have to register to get access. So go to tutorsummit.com to get access to that. Now, Coffee in hand, we are diving into this week's question where we ask, did Shakespeare smoke weed? It's such an interesting question that I couldn't leave it unaddressed, but the idea that Shakespeare might have smoked cannabis really tends to freak people out. And I think that's because cannabis and the idea of, you know, getting high and being sort of, you know, a Woodstock attendee or something is carries some kind of negative connotation. And so people freak out that Shakespeare might have smoked this plant. And I'll share with you some of the history behind that, but I wanted to mention it first that you have to remember that Shakespeare didn't live now. He lived 400 years ago during a time when the culture and the relationships to different plants and the implications of certain things were all different. There, there wasn't some kind of precedence that said, you know, you get high and loopy and can't make good decisions if you're, you know, smoking uh, Mary Jane. You know, I mean, this is not Shakespeare's reality. So what was Shakespeare's reality? And that's what we're going to dive in and discuss today. Cannabis is kind of a hot topic here in the US right now because several states across the 50 states of the United States are trying to decide whether or not to make medical marijuana legal. Several states have made the decision that yes, marijuana is going to be legal in their state. Colorado famously, I believe was the first state to do that, but they, have made it legal and several other states are trying to decide if they want to follow suit. It's a big debate. So cannabis is commonly called weed and it turns out that it may not have just been legal, but it was probably really popular when Shakespeare was writing his plays. Now let me tell you about this. Back in 2015, a bunch of scientists, Thackeray in particular, seems to be the butt of everyone's Uh, jokes and general criticism over this, he uh, spearheaded this investigation into a bunch of pipes that were found at Shakespeare's birthplace and trust in one of the gardens of the estate at New Place, where Shakespeare, you know, once he made it big in London, he bought the second biggest house in Stratford called New Place. New Place had a garden. In the garden, they found some pipes. And so they said, obviously, these are Shakespeare's pipes. Well, they went and did some scientific forensic investigation on these pipes and found traces of tobacco, nicotine, cocaine, and marijuana. And so everyone's freaking out like, why did Shakespeare have pipes in his garden? Why did Shakespeare have a garden? Was marijuana even smoked then? You know, I know several people in my high school thought that they invented it, but they didn't either. So where did it come from? Let's find out. In the 52 years that Shakespeare lived on the earth, 
he was in a time in England where it was massively focused on exploration. The Christopher Columbus and the Spaniards had kind of spearheaded the control over Latin America and that area. And so England was really focused on heading to the new world and colonizing the eastern coast of North America. That was their main focus. And when Shakespeare was just 21 years old, Sir Walter Riley was commissioned by Queen Elizabeth to go and explore these areas. And he was very ostentatiously bringing back new artifacts and samples from the new world to Queen Elizabeth to show her, you know, I'm, I'm accomplishing this for you. Here's what I have found. Here's what's there. Here's why exploration is valuable. And he, he brings these reports to court. And one of the things that he brought back was hemp. And this was kind of a hot topic. Everybody wanted to grow hemp. You see, England was in a massive amount of commercial debt, and they were in a lot of trouble um, financially with what they owed. And so if they could grow a really profitable crop, they could finally get out from under that and be independent, which is what Elizabeth wanted. And so the idea that hemp, which was found to grow wild in the Americas, could be their cash crop ticket out of commercial debt was extremely attractive. So when Sir Walter Raleigh came back and said, hey, look, I have this, they were really excited to try and make that work. They were going and they were exploring this and they did find that American hemp is not as strong as cannabis. So what was growing wild in the Americas wasn't as strong as cannabis. And that's why you have this distinction between hemp and marijuana and hemp is used more for jewelry now than it is to be smoked. And that's because they're, they're different varieties of the same sort of plant. Even though hemp was found, the wild growing hemp was found to be not quite the amazing thing that they thought it was going to be, it was still considered a very profitable market. They wanted this to be grown. And there was this huge demand for cannabis at the time. So the idea of using the colonies to grow this was extremely attractive. And in 1611, the crown issued formal orders for the colonists living in the Americas to grow hemp. And they didn't plan on the popularity of the American tobacco plant sort of outpacing cannabis, but it did. And tobacco became more popular. People liked it more. And in the 1600s, you can see royal proclamations and incentives that get put out intentionally to try and talk the colonists into growing hemp instead of tobacco. So in addition to hemp and cannabis, cocaine was very popular in Elizabethan England. Sir Francis Drake was the one who actually brought this back from his explorations to Peru. And so he brought Peruvian cocaine back to England in 1597. And 1597, Shakespeare was 33 years old. And it's the same year that he purchased New Place, which is the estate where the gardens were, where they found all these pipes. Now, the economic particulars of involved in trade and import-export of cannabis and hemp and cocaine is, is all very involved and much longer than what I can cover in today's lesson. But what we can reasonably conclude from all of this is that these substances were very popular in England. They were very popular among the circles in which Shakespeare was moving. When he would go to court and perform these plays for the crown, he was performing them at events that had been put together to welcome these explorers. The explorers were coming back to give a report to the crown on what they had found and the progress of their explorations and basically to justify all this investment the crown had made in them and their travels and to say, here are some samples of what we're doing and what we're accomplishing and why this is great. And that's what they were coming to do. And at these events, when they were coming to court, Shakespeare was brought in to provide the entertainment. So he was in the room with these people when they were bringing them back. And he was at these events where they were talking about these substances and he was moving in the circles of people who were discussing this and trying this. And it was really popular to smoke and to try these things. I mean, King James got so frustrated with the massive amount of smoking that was going on that he was issuing official edicts, you know, against smoking and talking about how bad it was. Some scholars who study the, the clay pipes will go in and they'll try to claim that Shakespeare was talking about marijuana when he uses the word weed in one of his sonnets. Now, I think that's a clever textual criticism, and I'm all in support of textual criticism. I have an English degree, after all. I appreciate textual theory, close reading, and, you know, avoiding intentional fallacy. However, it completely neglects the life of the author, but it also kind of ignores the etymology of that word in general. You see, according to the OED, 
an otherwise world-renowned authority on all things word, the Oxford English Dictionary, lists that the word marijuana didn't enter the English lexicon until the late 1830s. So marijuana would not be a word that Shakespeare had a handle on. However, the etymology dictionary, the online etymology dictionary, which is different from the OED, but an online etymology dictionary, even though they have the same letters, don't get confused. Hang with me here. It records the word weed used to describe tobacco as having been in use from the year 1600. So it does appear that if you look linguistically at the word weed, Shakespeare could have been talking about smoking in his sonnet, but he was most likely talking about tobacco and not marijuana, if that makes you feel better about what Shakespeare might have been smoking. It is really interesting to me that people take so much offense at the fact that Shakespeare might have been smoking marijuana. I mean, to me, it doesn't really matter. In Shakespeare's time, they didn't know anything about marijuana. Marijuana, cocaine, and tobacco were all brand new substances. They didn't know it could hurt them. They didn't have these, you know, associations with different, you know, famous deaths and tragedies that occur from drug use. They, they didn't have all of that history with these plants that tainted their view of it. And so it's not like it changes Shakespeare's reputation that he might have tried these substances, not to mention finding traces of these substances in clay pipes that were in the ground that he owned is hardly conclusive evidence that he smoked them at all. So it's really a leap to say that he smoked them at all, but it wouldn't be surprising because these were popular during his time. And so it would be completely normal for an artist to draw Shakespeare smoking one of these pipes because everyone smoked in 16th century Elizabethan England. I mean, even Ben Jonson in his play every man in his humor two of the characters in that play are arguing over tobacco so it was so prevalent that it's even included in one of the plays and in the year 1600 sir walter riley even convinced queen elizabeth to try smoking i don't know whether or not she liked it or continued with it i just was able to find that he did actually convince her to try smoking and he's the one after all that's credited with bringing over some of these plants and of course he had a great personal relationship with Queen Elizabeth that we should talk about sometime. An interesting fact about the history of tobacco and plants and weed and cocaine and all of these medicinal plants in Elizabethan England was that Pocahontas, yes, the Pocahontas, her wife, John Rolfe, grew the first commercial tobacco crop for England in the Americas. And he grew it in Virginia, which was colonized by Sir Walter Riley and named Virginia after Queen Elizabeth I. Now, Pocahontas married John Rolfe in 1614 after a massive, massive enthralling history that you should really read about Pocahontas. I'll put some links to her story in the show notes because you need to read her story, but I'm talking to you about plants today, so I'm going to skip it, but go read it because it's awesome. She married him in 1614, and that's when Shakespeare was 50 years old. It was the same year that there was the massive fire in Stratford-upon-Avon, where 54 dwellings were completely burned to the ground. Shakespeare's home was spared, but he was a leader in the town at the time, so there are a lot of legal records from that time period where different leaders and Shakespeare are debating over how to rebuild Stratford and how to repair what has been burned. It's also the year that the Globe Theater was rebuilt after it burned down. So lots of fire in 1614, but also the year that Pocahontas married John Rolfe. And so when Shakespeare was appearing at court and performing in front of royalty, the nobility would have had conversations about the tobacco crop in the Americas and about Pocahontas and about John Rolfe, all going on within earshot of what Shakespeare was hearing as far as the popular talk of the day. Ben Johnson even wrote a letter about how he met Pocahontas at an inn. And so it was very close to home for Shakespeare. Some of his, you know, next door neighbors, right hand men, people he interacted with all the time were participating in this industry, knew about Pocahontas, knew about John Rolfe, knew about tobacco. During the winter of 1614 to 1615, the King's men performed at court eight times. That was about half the number of times they normally do, but again, their theater burned down, so they were a little busy. So we'll wrap up this little brief history of plant use in Elizabethan England by saying that smoking tobacco use pipes of long and short variety were 
popular in England, and it is reasonable to think that Shakespeare would have smoked them. It was popular, fashionable, and common for people to carry pipes and for people to smoke tobacco, cocaine, and marijuana. Do we know if the pipes found in the garden belong to Shakespeare conclusively? No. I mean, it's not like we found his fingerprints on them. Uh, we didn't test for his DNA on them. Do we know if Shakespeare actually smoked? No, I'm, we don't. We can't say for certain that he actually smoked them, but does it seem entirely likely based on the massive prevalence of tobacco use in and around exactly where Shakespeare was during this time period, combined with the fact that he was performing at court where these substances would have been showcased and in all of their lavish newness and their attractive nature, does it seem reasonable that Shakespeare would have tried tobacco, that he would have tried marijuana, that he might have tried cocaine. Um, yeah, it was easy to get. It was popular. It was fashionable among the people that Shakespeare wanted to impress. And it makes complete sense that Shakespeare would have smoked weed. So hope that doesn't damage your view of Shakespeare at all. It certainly doesn't mine. Um, if anything, it only serves to make him more interesting. And that it is definitely an interesting question. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode and that you learned something new about the Bard. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. Every like and subscription that you put on this video and this channel helps this information about Shakespeare reach more people. And as you know, as Shakespeareans, we love more friends. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.